Hello, my name is Kirsten and I'm the Plural Clinical Nurse Consultant here at the Northern Hospital. Today I'm going to show you how to manage and drain an indwelling pleural catheter or IPC as well as an indwelling peritoneal catheter or IPEC. An indwelling pleural catheter or IPC as well as an IPEC is a narrow, soft and flexible tube which drains fluid from the area around your lungs called the pleural space. The pleural space is the space around your lungs created by the outer lining of the lung and the inner lining of your chest wall. If fluid collects in the pleural space, this can affect your lungs and cause shortness of breath. Draining the fluid can help relieve shortness of breath. It is common for fluid to return after it is drained. The tube allows fluid to be drained painlessly and as often as necessary without having to come to hospital. The tube is tunneled underneath the skin on the side of your chest and then passes through the chest wall and into the pleural space. There is a one-way valve on the end of the tube which stops fluid leakage and prevents air going into the tube. There is a soft cuff around the tube which is positioned under the skin. The skin will heal around the cuff which secures the tube and keeps it in position. When your tube is inserted, two stitches will be put in place to keep it secure while the skin heals. These will be removed after 10 to 14 days. The tube stays in place for as long as needed so that the fluid can be drained easily. These tubes can also be used for patients who have fluid that collects in their abdomen. If fluid collects in the abdomen, this can cause discomfort and abdominal pressure. It can also affect your breathing if a lot of fluid has accumulated. Draining the fluid can help relieve the discomfort, pressure and shortness of breath. Tubes that are placed in the abdomen are called indwelling peritoneal catheters or IPEX. Fluid is drained from the chest with a vacuum bottle. Fluid is drained from the abdomen with a drainage bag. You are not continuously attached to the drainage device. Drainages can be performed at a time that suits you. It usually takes between 5 to 15 minutes to perform a drainage. The vacuum bottle or bag comes in a drainage kit which also includes equipment to keep your tube clean and to redress it. There are five kits in a box. These kits will be supplied to you by the hospital. If you are running low on kits, call the plural phone number to arrange further supplies. The drainage kits include a vacuum bottle or bag, a rubbish bag and a dressing pack. The dressing pack includes sterile gloves, alcohol wipes, a new cap, a split foam dressing, gauze, a clear dressing and an emergency clamp. The emergency clamp is used to clamp the tube in a very rare situation in which the valve becomes disconnected or if the tube is cut or punctured. Within the kit there is also an adapter. This is utilised if your IPC is made by a different brand. All of the IPCs inserted here at Northern Health though are made by Rocket, so you will not need to use this. This video will not demonstrate the use of the adapter. Before the procedure starts, make sure the individual with the tube is comfortable and in a position that allows easy access to the dressing and the IPC insertion site. A couch or recliner chair is a good option if available, with the individual sitting up slightly and to the side. You will need a clean, clear workspace such as a coffee table or bench top. Finding a good position and location for the equipment will take a little time and some trial and error. When opening the dressing pack, make sure to only touch the outside border to ensure the contents inside the pack remain clean or sterile. Try to only touch the contents with the sterile gloves. Even with the sterile gloves, it is important to try and avoid touching the back of the dressings and the three key parts. This is to reduce the risk of infection or contamination as much as possible. The three main key parts to avoid touching include the blue valve, the bottom edge of the cap and the access device. Before putting on the gloves, it is important to clean our hands either by washing them with warm water and soap or with hand sanitizer. However, this can make our hands damp or more difficult to put on the gloves, so make sure your hands are very dry before attempting to put them on. Putting on the gloves is usually the trickiest part as they are one size fits all. When putting the gloves on, the main aim is to avoid touching the outside of them with anything that is not sterile, for example, our hands, skin or clothing. 
in order to reduce the risk of contamination of the tube. Before we go through the steps of the draining and redressing of the tube, let's learn how to put on the sterile gloves. To put on the gloves, pick up one glove by the inside of the wrist, while also trying to avoid touching anything inside the dressing pack, and place it on the opposite hand. To avoid touching your gloved hand against the skin of your non-gloved hand, when picking up the new glove, make a small cuff as shown. Slide your hand into the glove without touching your skin. It is important to keep the gloves as clean as possible, but if you make a mistake with the gloves and touch your skin, that is okay. Just try to be more vigilant about the key parts and avoid touching the back of the dressings. To begin the drainage procedure, collect all the equipment, ensure the table you are going to use is clean and the individual is in a comfortable position. Now clean your hands by washing them with soap and warm water. Remove any rings or jewellery that may get in the way or that might puncture the gloves or the tube. Remove the old dressing like so, remembering the tube is coiled beneath the gauze, so it is important to remove each layer gently to avoid tugging at the tube. Once the dressing is removed, clean your hands again, either by washing them again with soap and warm water or using a hand sanitizer. Open the drainage kit packet like so, Leave the vacuum bottle inside the package. Take out the inner packet containing the dressing pack and garbage bag. Open up the rubbish bag and place somewhere close by. Open up the dressing pack, ensuring only to touch the edges so it's to keep the contents clean. Make sure your hands are very dry and put on the gloves, ensuring not to touch the outside of the gloves. Prepare the equipment. Open the swabs. Place two pieces of gauze to the side for the procedure. Discard the adapter packet and open the cap packet. In your non-dominant hand, pick up the gauze and the catheter. In your dominant hand, clean the cap with the swab and then unclick the cap and discard both the cap and the swab. Pick up the second swab and clean the valve. Try not to touch with the gloves, just the swab. Place the valve down on the second piece of clean gauze, ensuring it does not move off the gauze. Pick up the bottle and remove the outer wrapping. Ensure there is suction within the bottle by ensuring the blue vacuum indicator has not expanded. If the indicator has expanded, there is not adequate vacuum within the bottle, so this should be discarded and a new kit should be opened. Hold the top of the bottle and all the cables with your non-dominant hand and remove the tape with your dominant hand. Hand the bottle to the individual. Undo the plastic protector over the access device, making sure not to touch it. Pick up the end of the catheter and insert the access device and twist clockwise to click together to secure. Ask the individual to undo the white clamp and squeeze the blue tubing underneath to make sure it is open. If the patient is unable to do this, undo the white clamp before you hand the bottle to the patient. The patient can now start draining fluid by gently pressing the blue button. The patient can control the rate of drainage by how firm they press the button. It is okay to stop and start. If the drainage is comfortable, the blue slider can be used to keep the drainage going. If the patient or individual experiences pain or discomfort, stop the drainage or reduce pressure on the blue button. Some discomfort is normal during drainages, but severe pain or shortness of breath is not. In this situation, stop the drainage and wait a few minutes. Attempt again. If it continues, then cease the drainage and contact the pleural nurse. If minimal fluid is draining, it is good to try and change positions. For example, sitting up or rolling to the side of the drain. Coughing can help as well. If minimal or no fluid is draining, but the patient is experiencing symptoms, there might be a blockage in the tube. If this is suspected, it is important to contact the pleural phone as soon as possible. Drainage usually takes five to 10 minutes. Once the drainage has stopped or the bottle is full, release the blue button or slider. Disconnect the drainage bottle by twisting it counterclockwise and pull the access tip out. Clean the valve again with a swab trying not to touch it with your gloves. Pick up the new cap without touching the bottom and attach the new cap. Rotate clockwise and click it to secure. If you are draining fluid from the abdomen, the procedure is very similar, but instead of using a vacuum bottle, a two litre drainage bag is used instead. 
Before attaching the drainage bag, ensure the roller clamp is closed. Undo the plastic protector over the access device, making sure not to touch it. Pick up the end of the catheter and insert the access device and twist clockwise to click together to secure it. Use the roller clamp to control the rate of drainage. Drainage usually takes between 10 and 15 minutes. Utilising gravity can assist with draining by having the bag lower than the patient, but take care not to pull on the tube to avoid causing pain or accidental dislodgement of the tube. Disconnect the drainage bag, clean the valve and place the new cap on the tube as shown previously. Clean the catheter with the last swab by wiping down the tube and away from the wound. We don't recommend cleaning the wound with the alcohol swab. It is normal to see some ooze and a scab forming around the tube. If the wound looks very red or inflamed, is hot to touch or has yellow ooze, it could be a sign that it is infected and you should contact the pleural foam. Place the split foam dressing into position. Coil the catheter over the split foam. Then place the three pieces of gauze over the top of the coiled catheter. Place the plastic dressing over the top. Remove number one, hold on to number two, smooth down the dressing, then remove both pieces of two, then remove number three away from the middle and close to the skin. Smooth the edges down. If there are any gaps, you can use spare tegaderm dressings to cover it. After the drainage, it is important to record the date, time and volume of the fluid drain in the drainage diary. Drainage frequency will be different for everyone. It may be recommended that you drain the fluid every day or alternatively, whenever you begin to feel breathless. It is normally recommended that a maximum of 500 mL of fluid is drained per day from the chest, but in some cases it may be recommended to drain more. It is not recommended to drain more than two litres of fluid per day from the abdomen. The nurse and doctor looking after you will help to guide this. It is important to follow the instructions about the frequency and volume of the fluid drained. It is okay to shower after the IPC or IPEC is inserted. You will be supplied with dressing covers for the shower. It is recommended to keep the dressing as dry as possible until the stitches are removed 10 days after insertion. When showering, try to avoid direct flow of the water over the dressing. If the dressing becomes wet, you can open a kit to change the dressing. It is not recommended to have a bath or swim while the tube is in place. Once the wound heals after four to eight weeks, you can shower without a dressing. Always feel free to call the plural phone number if you have any questions or concerns or if you suspect there is a problem with the tube. The phone number is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If we don't answer your call, always leave a message and we will get back to you as soon as possible. This number is available to healthcare workers also for any questions or support when managing IPCs or IPECs. Some examples of when you should call include if you suspect infection of the tube or the skin around the tube, if there is a sudden decrease or cessation in drainage output from the tube, if the tube is cut or damaged, if your breathlessness is getting worse, if you need further drainage supplies, or if you have increased pain on drainage. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. We hope that it was helpful. If you need any help or have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us here at the Northern Hospital.